120,000 years ago, elk entered North America. These two continents, separated by a large ocean, became joined as huge glaciers expanded in the polar regions, dropping ocean levels by as much as 300 feet. This drop in water levels created an immense land bridge between these two formerly divided continents and allowed the red deer or elk to cross into North America. Strange, haunting, bugling sounds can be heard echoing off the mountains and into the valleys below. The elk rut has arrived. Every year, in early to mid-September, the elk become embroiled in their annual mating ritual, creating an exciting and magical display. Mature bulls, which have been quiet, reclusive denizens of the woods, suddenly begin to appear around the herds of cows. As the cows start to come into estrus, or their breeding cycle, hormonal changes are triggered in the bulls. To view the rut, one would conclude that it resembles some form of game or tournament, where contestants show off and posture themselves for the females, only to be outdone by another challenger. The winner gains the right to breed. Of course, the cow may not be susceptible to his advances. The way the bull displays his rack with body language is equally important. Twisting, turning, raising and lowering his head, all add to his visibility, majesty, and ultimate herd dominance. Bulls also tear up the ground around them in an effort to gain attention and release pent up energy. The huge antlers make short work of the grass and dirt. With all this running, moving, and rutting activity, these bulls become overheated Bulls will also excavate holes in the ground with their antlers, urinate in this plowed up mud, and then lay down and roll around. This serves a twofold purpose. The wet mud will help to cool the elk, and a layer of this foul smelling mud is applied to their bodies, thereby increasing their olfactory presence that much more. By now, a large bull has made quite a visual statement. Bugling is an audible form of advertising for the large bulls. Studies have revealed that bull elk which bugle with the most frequency, intensity, and volume are usually the most successful in breeding and controlling their harem of cows. The weather changes and snow falls. Energy is conserved as the elk just wait out this storm. Cows and bulls often move to different habitats for their winter ranges. While bulls may retreat to higher, snow-covered meadows where food is adequate, but not necessarily as nutritious, the cows and calves migrate into areas with south-facing slopes to take advantage of the more nutritious grasses exposed by the warm sun. Behavior such as this results in a better survival rate for the cows and calves. Already weakened from the rut, 
This bull is forced to sustain itself on branches and twigs. Not very nutritious. Signs of starvation are already present on the sides of this bull, as ribs begin to show. This magnificent animal will probably succumb to the rigors of winter. The coyote may wait several days for an animal to succumb, and this method of patiently waiting is far safer than taking on a weakened elk. For the elk still has sharp hooves, and these are a formidable weapon. The coyote is not a very large predator. The coyote is an efficient and thorough predator. Within days, a pack of coyotes can reduce an elk carcass to bones. Individual coyotes may feed side by side, tolerating each other's presence. Disagreements do occur frequently and are usually driven by a coyote which stays too long at the carcass or breaks some unseen rules of behavior. At this point, outright skirmishes can and do happen. Heads are lowered, fangs are bared, growling noises erupt, and dominance is asserted. Rarely are confrontations more violent than this, as aggressive visual and audible displays usually settle the dispute. 